In this presentation, we're going to look at z-scores. Now, uh, these are sort of lecture notes, but I'm going to annotate them just to sort of uh, concentrate on the, on the main points I want to make in this presentation. Essentially, what we have here is we'll have some value x, and it's from a, 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 dis a normal distribution with mean mu and standard deviation sigma. And what we would do there, first off, there's just a bit of background. What we would do there first off is we would try and find the z-score, okay? So mu minus, or x minus mu over sigma, something like that. Now the reason we would sort of do something like that is because we can sort of state this probability here. We usually uh, find the probability of x greater than some value, or and that would be equal to the probability of z being greater than some corresponding value or something like other, or less uh, x less than some specific value. x0 and z0 means just some uh, 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 specific value where capital X, capital Z is like the variable names. Uh, okay, so let's, let's just sort of move on from that and just make it a bit clearer. So for some value x0, okay, let's just say for example 1.96, uh, between 0 and 4, okay, so uh, you get some positive number between 0 and 4 and it will be sort of usually to two decimal places. The Murdoch's Barnes table set 3 tabulates a probability of x, uh, z being greater than z0. So for example you'd be able to find out something like this probability of 1.96 or z being greater than 1.96 or something like that. Ideally your number z0 uh, should be specified to two decimal places if not rounded to the close, closest uh, value okay uh, so what we're going to do here is essentially what we have to do is sort of split our number up into two parts we have a a, 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 a number like this 1.96 or for example 1.28 or one point or let's go uh, 2.57 or something like that and what we do is just sort of split it up into two parts Okay, so to compute the relevant probabilities, we express z0, this is our number, as the sum of z0 without the second precision and the second precision. Okay, so essentially what I mean, uh, what I mean by that is we have a number like this, 1.28, okay, or 1.96, and what we're going to do is first take out the first two digits, and then we'll take the se uh, the last digit after that. So what we're doing is splitting it up into two numbers, 1.20 and 0 0.08, okay? So something like that. I'll just underline it with the corresponding points, okay? Now, this is going to be our row, and this is going to be our column, okay? And so it would work something like that. So essentially, if you want to find the probability of z being greater than 1.28, what we're going to do is pick out the row uh, 1.2 and then the column 0 0.08. Okay. So here, I'll just scroll down here a little bit. Uh, just pause it till I get it. There we go. So uh, find the probability of z being greater than or greater than or equal to 1.28. Okay. So as we said here, the row is 1.2. Well, actually, I said 1.20, but just 1.2. So we're going to pick this row here. Okay. And the column is not 0.08. And this column here. So let's just sort of see how that works. Okay. So uh, I, I, with the highlighting there, I sort of it looks a bit hard to read. So it's 1.003 is the value we get. Okay. So that's the cross section. So the answer for this one here, probability of z being greater than greater than or equal to 1.28, is 0 0.1003 just roughly 10%, okay? Now, uh, let's try a few more of these. So, use Murdoch Barnes to find the probability of z being greater than 0 0.60. Well, 0 0.60, the row would be 0 0.6, and the column is simply going to be 0 0.00, okay? So, let's just look at that one in the next slide. There we are. The row, 0 0.6, and the first column 
is the 0, 0.00 column so the answer we're looking for is 0 0.2743 okay now next one let's just go back here first uh, we're going to do these two together find the probability of z being greater than 1.64 and the z being greater than 1.65 so the row for both cases is 1.6 and the columns are they're going to be right beside each other so 0 0.04 and 0 0.05 okay and let's get down to the next slide here pause it and there we go sorry I just had to pause it there just to get it right so 1.6 okay uh, it's 1.6 in both cases so the row is 1.6 and the columns are uh, 0 0.04 and 0 0.05 okay so the answer we're looking at is log point 0 0.0505 and 0 0.0 uh, yeah, you can read it there. 0 0.0495. Okay. So, um, yeah, so, on scratch. yeah. So those are the answers there. It's a, just at the intersection of both. Okay. So I'm gonna go down to the next one here. Uh, what we're gonna do is estimate the probability of z being greater than or equal to 1.645. Essentially, now this is a very unusual one. It's very deliberately picked that I picked this one. Now, if you're not familiar with this stuff yet, this number is going to feature later on in confidence intervals and hypothesis testing. Okay, so it's not that this number was not picked at random. Okay, so it's sort of helpful uh, to work back here. So anyway, the probability of Z being greater than 1.64 is not point. Uh, sorry, the decimal points are in the wrong place there. Point zero five and point. Uh, I'll just write them out again. Zero point zero five zero five zero point four nine uh, nine five. Roughly about five percent each. So the probability of Z uh, being greater or equal to one point six four five is approximately the average of those two numbers. Okay, so it's essentially the average of those two which is about five percent okay not uh, not point not five zero zero okay five percent okay so uh, you're going to sort of uh, see that again later on in confidence intervals okay now just as an important remark um, what I'm going to sort of state here is that uh, this is to do with continuous distributions only so the probability, uh, essentially I'm just going to give you the short answer. The probability of x greater than or equal to k is pretty much the same as probability of x greater than k. The reason is essentially that the probability, I'll just highlight it here, the probability that the continuous random variable will take an exact value is infinitely small and we usually treat it as zero. Okay, so that's why uh, the the statement I have written up there at the top uh, is 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 valid. It's a, it's a bit of a workaround, but essentially what you're sort of saying is the probability of x being uh, precisely some number is treated as zero. Okay, I just get asked a lot of that in the comments. Okay, so if you're familiar with using these things here rather than these things here and you wonder why is there a difference there isn't a difference okay now uh, there's a, another remark there and it is not something I'm going to deal with in this talk but uh, this, this, uh, this presentation but the Murdoch Barnes works on the basis of this okay that's very loud lettering I'll just write that again probability of z being greater than or equal to z0 where z0 is some sort of value okay now uh, other uh, tables work on a different basis they might work on the basis of less than or equal to some value okay so you will actually get the complement it's really easy to do uh, to uh, get 
just sort of figure it out just to sort of be, uh, work one from the other you're just getting the complement so for example here you would be getting uh, you might sort of see 0 0.8997 in this intersection point rather than 0 0.1103 it's essentially you're just getting the complement uh, so the Murdoch Barnes works on one particular basis uh, other uh, statistical tables work on a, they might have the complement of what I'm presenting but really just it's a quick switch around okay so that's it that's how I have a quick look at how, at how to work with the Murdoch Barnes statistical tables